Hello, our church family and friends. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am so thankful that you're here. Our church is a non-denominational church that meets in Madison, Wisconsin, Sunday mornings at 10 a.m., and we would invite you to make our church your church today. If you're looking for a church, this is a great church to be a part of. We want you to come join us in person. Now, this message is recorded and streamed at the same time across several platforms, but we meet together in person. We have communion together. We worship together. We have lunch on the lawn together, Bible studies together, and we would love for you to be a part of our church. Make our life and your life connect together. Do you know what? If I wasn't saved, what I would do, I would get saved. This is truly the only life to live. Today, we're ending the series called The Kingdom Within, and I've titled this message, From Potential to Purpose. It's all about stepping into destiny's call. Before we jump straight into this, let's go before the Father in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today with open hearts, ready to receive your word. Help us to understand the unique destiny you have for each and every one of us and empower us to step boldly into that plan. In Jesus' name, and everybody says, Amen. All right, our church family, as we conclude this series today, we're going to focus on an incredible truth that each of us has a unique destiny and a calling from the Lord. I am talking to you, you that are listening, whether you are following God like you're supposed to, whether you're struggling in an area or whether you haven't even confessed Jesus as your Savior yet, you have a unique destiny and a calling from God. This is not a vague notion, but a specific purpose that God has ordained for our lives. Let us explore how we can step into the destiny with confidence and with faith. This brings me to my first point this morning, or whether you're watching in the rebroadcast, it brings me to divine design. Let's look at Jeremiah 29 and 11. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, and to give you an expected end. I just want to say that this goes against the mentality of a lot of people. God is saying, I have thoughts toward you, and they are only good. They are only of peace, and they are not of evil. Many people think when God thinks of them, it is only how to get back at them, how to treat them in, in a manner to pay them back for the evil that they have done to others or maybe a sin that they have committed, that they believe God is out to get them. My friend, God is out to get you, but only to bring thoughts of peace into your home. He wants to get you the best that life has to offer. He wants you to thrive no matter what circumstance that you are in. He wants to bring peace to you. He wants you to be separated from evil. God is good and His mercy endures forever. God has a plan for each of us, a divine design that is filled with hope and purpose. His thoughts toward us are good. And He is leading us into a future that is brimming with promise. Consider a master architect who design, uh, designs beautiful buildings. Each detail is intentional. Just as God has a design for your life and for His glory, let me tell you that God, every good thing you ever have done has been designed by God. Every place you have gone and, and every trouble that you have faced where all of a sudden there was an answer, the answer was designed by God. God put people in your life to cause you to be able to carry on and go further, to pray for you, to lift you up. God has placed you in a church that will be a part of your life, who will love you, who will show you kindness. God is very intentional in the good things that are in your life. 
I want to encourage you to speak and to seek God in prayer. I want you to ask the Father to show you the plans for your life. I would like to put this out there for your thought process that maybe you should write down your dreams and aspirations and ask God to reveal His purpose in them. My second point today is diligent development. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. It states, for we are His workmanship. That word workmanship in the Greek is an amazing word, and we'll get to it. But for we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Every good work that you walk in was ordained from the beginning. And look at this word again, back to workmanship. We are His workmanship. You were created for good works. This word workmanship in the Hebrew, or excuse me, in the Greek is where we get the word poetry from. When God made you, you are His poetry. You are His beautiful, beautiful work. And He has created you for good things. This means that our destiny involves actively participating in God's plan. We must be diligent in developing our gifts and our talents. I enjoy gardening. I enjoy growing flowers. I enjoy growing tomatoes. I enjoy growing cucumbers. I like growing any plant. <laughs> I used to like growing peppers, but I think it takes too long for the price of peppers. <laughs> Not bell peppers, but like hot peppers or anything of that nature. Just as a gardener nurtures the growth, there are certain times with, with the tomato plants that we cut off certain suckers, we cut off certain limbs, or not the, the sprouts that are coming out so that the plant grows better and nutrition goes to where it's needed the most. Just as a gardener, and I'm, I'm not a great gardener. I can make things live. I can, it, I can help them thrive. I know just enough to keep something alive. There are people out there with knowledge that can bring plants that are almost at the uh, door of death back to life. Just as that gardener nurtures the growth, we must cultivate our spiritual gifts through prayer, study, and service, not only in church, but to one another. I want you to identify your spiritual gifts and find ways to use them in service to others. I want you to figure out what plan God has for you. And I want you to cooperate with His poetry, with His building, with His plan, and help establish His kingdom that is on the inside of you on this earth. There are a lot of hurting people that need the peace of God, that needs God direction for their lives. You know, I, I believe some of you just thought, well, I need that of mine. And I know God. He's my Savior, and I need His intervention. I need His direction. A great minister of God and that I know has an amazing church. One time he told me, Tim, the fastest way to fulfill the call of God on your life is to help someone fulfill the call of God on theirs. Sowing that seed, reaping that harvest. I'm going to tell you, you may feel like you don't have everything together, that you need direction. Well, I'm just going to tell you. Helping someone else that needs the exact same thing you do is a great seed to sow in their life. Uh, this brings me to my third point. Determined discipleship. Let's look at 2 Timothy 1 and 9. Who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our work, but according to His purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. That word called is the word keleo, and it means to call or invite. God is calling and inviting us to participate in His kingdom. 
Our calling is holy. It is a calling that is rooted in God's grace and His purpose. And stepping into our destiny requires determination. It requires discipleship. It requires committing ourselves to follow Christ and His teachings. God is actively inviting us to participate in His plan. We see throughout the entire Bible that God invites His people to participate in His plan. We see those who are absolutely willing and wanting to participate in God's plan. And then we see those who are reluctant to participate in the plan of God. David was enthusiastically excited about his calling as king and a servant of God. His willingness to face Goliath exemplifies his faith and excitement to fulfill his purpose that God has on his life. He often expressed joy in serving through God, uh, through his, his psalms and celebrating his relationships with the Lord. Isaiah responded to God with eagerness. Here I am, Lord, send me. Moses started out reluctantly uh, feeling inadequate, but embraced the invite from God to participate in the Lord's plan. Esther was afraid for her life, but recognized what her uncle was stating, that if she would not help, God would remove her and find somebody that would and that the people of God would be delivered. But this was her opportunity. And she chose to participate in God's plan. She chose to answer the invitation. Jonah is perhaps one of the most famous examples of reluctancy in the Bible. When God called him to Nineveh, to preach repentance, he fled in the opposite direction. Now you know the story. I don't, I'm not going to go into it today. But he eventually did what God called him to do. We see people all through the Bible that were willing to do what God said. And we see people who were, who were scared. And we see people who absolutely did not want to do what God called them to do. They all had their reasons. They all had their thought processes. And I can guarantee you nothing went exactly like they thought it would. But the beauty is that when they said yes, God was there to lead and guide them the entire time. As a people of God, will you answer the invitation? Will you answer the call to deepen your relationship with God through regular Bible study, through prayer, through regular church attendance, through fellowship? Will you find someone who is just as interested in walking with the Lord as you are? Will you have someone to stay accountable to? Will you make friendships on purpose in your church with godly people? To stay the course. Today we have looked at exploring the truth that God has a unique destiny for each of us. We have learned about the divine design, the importance of diligent development, and the necessity of determined discipleship in stepping into our calling. I want to challenge you today. I want to challenge everyone that is listening to take a step this week toward fulfilling your destiny. Seek God's guidance His, and, and work on developing your giftings and commit to following Christ with everything in you. I would love for us to be able to close in prayer this morning. Lord, we thank you we thank you for the unique destinies you have placed on each of our lives. Help us to step boldly into our calling, trusting in your plan and in your purposes. May we walk in the fullness of your calling, impacting the world around us with your love. Fill us with your power. And we pray this all in the name of Jesus.
Amen. I would love for you to take a moment to reflect on your personal calling. I want you to write down one action, one step that you can take this week to pursue your destiny. It can be small or it can be huge. Whatever you feel the Lord has placed on your heart. I want you to share that action, that step, with a friend or a family member. Stay accountable. And also, you'll have their support in prayer. My friend, I hope this message has blessed you. And I want to encourage you that you are called. You have a destiny. And I know, I believe with everything in me, you want to fulfill it. Ask the Lord for direction. Ask God to show you what your giftings are. And then pray every day for the boldness to walk in it. God, give us your boldness. May we be bold on your calling. One last thing, and then I'm done. I want you to ask the Holy Spirit, what are you speaking to me in this sermon? What are you speaking to my heart? What in this message what are you trying to tell me? Maybe it's something I said. Maybe it's something I haven't even alluded to, but the Lord will speak to your heart and show you. I thank you, Father, for each life, how precious they are and what a plan you have for them. May they fulfill it all in Jesus' name. Amen. My friend, I hope this message again has blessed you. Our church is a non-denominational church in Madison, Wisconsin, and we would invite you to make our church your church today. We believe that God will put His goodness on your life, and you will be great. You won't be kind of... Let, let me put it this way. God, he, he works in the supernatural. You're natural, He's super. He will put His super on your natural, and you will be, not might be, you will be a mighty force for the Lord. Well, my friends, again, I hope this message has blessed you. If you live in southern Wisconsin, come be a part of our live service. If you live too far outside of southern Wisconsin, continue to join us online. I love our in-person family, but don't get me wrong. I love our online family as well. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for participating. Thank you for being a part. God bless you. I will see you in person or online next week.